following up for you, the Bank of Ghana has fined Fidelity Bank Ghana Limited and First National Bank Ghana Limited a combined 1,000 penalty points each for breaching sections 3.4, 3.5 and 3.9 of the Ghana Interbank Forex Market Conduct Rules. In addition, the central bank has suspended the respective forex licenses of the banks from June 29 to July 28. Now, the central bank in a statement cautioned forex market players, including banks, forex bureaus, forex brokers and money transfer operators to adhere strictly to the applicable forex market regulations and guidelines. Now, before we engage the perspective of banking consultant Nana Utui Champong first, um, we do know that the First National Bank has released a statement in response to the allegations. Well, it says it will soon reach an amicable resolution with the Bank of Ghana over the fine. Let's now bring in banking consultant Nana Utui Champon for more on this, and he joins me via phone. Uh, pleasure you could join me, sir, on the marketplace. Nana, break it down for us. For the purposes of education, what does this Ghana Interbank Forex Market Conduct Rule is all about? Well, it's all about how forex rates are quoted. And 3.4, 3.5, and 3.9 mm. in summary relates to what the bank should do with regard to quoting these forex rates. For instance, 3.4 says you have to update your uh, quotations every 30 minutes, whether there has been a change or there has been no change. So in this instance, they're saying um, you didn't update even though you knew that there hasn't been a change. So if the rate was a 10 to the dollar at 12, and at 12.30 it's still 10 to the dollar, you should still do the physical change. And I think that the banks were found to have infected by assuming that if there had not been a change between 12.30, um, 12 o'clock and 12.30, then there was no need. Now they said, no, you have to, because uh, 3.5 and 3.9 says that they will report these on Reuters and Bloomberg platforms, and therefore they, they need to be there. Now, if you look at the infraction and relative to what they are charging them, they said for doing that, they are charging you 1,000 penalty units. Mm. And the penalty unit is 12 Ghana cities. So effectively, 12,000 cities. Okay. Now, relate that to publishing this in the public domain and the reputational damage that is being caused, the fear and panic that is being put in customers, it, 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 they don't match up. So I think um, the bank, both of them have issued press statements regarding this, and they've started frantic negotiations with the regulator to ensure that this one month is set to test to the barest minimum. I mm. think going forward, it's a lesson for mm. both uh, all the players that, you know, don't try to kill the proverbial house set of life with a sledgehammer because it's out of proportion. Mm. Because they, they, that, this notice, which has been made public, um, appears untoward because, I mean, banks are fined practically every day for various infractions of the regulation, but they are not public. Mm. So what we are wondering is, why was this public? Um, I, exactly, my, exactly my next line of question, uh, yeah. because Fidelity Bank and, of course, First National Bank are mm -hmm. big banks in the country. So I'm wondering uh, how they were able to fall foul of these forex market rules. Well, I, well they, 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 I've explained that um, it's something that I think shouldn't have happened, but they assume, as I said, that, for instance, you are supposed to update your file every 30 minutes. Mm. And their understanding was that the update should happen if there's a change. Because every 30 minutes, you have to update. And as I said, if the exchange rate is 10 to 1 at 12 noon, at 12.30, if it's still 10 to 1, you need to change according to the uh, rule. But they uh, erroneously felt that once there has not been a change and it's still 10 to 1, then you could leave it there. Mm. So, so, yes, so, clarity has been made. So, that means the punishment, in my opinion, is, is far-reaching. 
All right, so Nana, between now and July 28, which the Bank of Ghana has rightly spelled out, uh, yes. what will happen to their forex operating space? Well, they have to get um, partner banks to uh, operate those because it means they cannot, um, you know, operate those forex issues. And everything has got to be done by another licensed bank. Well, then both of them may be in negotiations with their partner banks to handle that on a temporary basis. But my hope is that it won't last as much as 30 days and that it will be short 30 days. There are other developments which we can discuss now, maybe in another conversation we can discuss. But for now, that, that is what just happened. All right. So will this sanction have any sort of implications on the operations and, of course, customer confidence um, likely to be impacted? Well, naturally, it will be impacted because uh, unless the media is able to explain to people the actual thing that has happened. There are in some circles people are saying the banking licenses of the two banks have been suspended, which is not the case. It's only their forest license. So their banking licenses remain intact. However, how to explain this to the general public, especially for the uninitiated, is one of the problems that the two banks face. We are indeed grateful, Nana Utui Champong, for your time here on the marketplace, breaking it all down for us.